Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Walker, and I'm from Bond University Library. Um, and today we're just going to have an overview of RefWorks. Um, you can ask questions via the chat, and I'll get to those after the presentation. Um, also, I just want to start by saying, firstly, I've got a bit of a cold, so excuse me for my voice is a little bit croaky. Um, also, I just want to say I'm definitely not an expert at RefWorks but it is quite an easy program to use. So um, I'm just going to give you an overview of the features um, via PowerPoint and then we can go in and actually do some playing around. Okay, so to get started. So setting up an account, um, once your university or institution is set up, it's a very, very easy process for users. So they just click on to set an account put in the institution um, email. They don't have to download any software, so that's one major advantage over things like, say, EndNote. Um, it's just all browser-based. Um, and yeah, they can get started right away. So once they've set up an account, um, so there's a few ways you can add citations. So manually adding citations. Um, and I'll give you a look in RefWorks in a second, but there's a little plus add button you can just do to create your own. Um, and you can upload a document, so you can just drag and drop a document put in that way. Um, sometimes it's really great at getting all the metadata and creating a good reference. Other times it just gives you really nothing and you have to just edit it yourself. Um, and you can also just create a new reference and manually enter it all that way as well. Okay, so automatically adding citations, which I guess is the way most people would be doing it. Um, so Primo, which we call library search, um, under the site menu, um, there's an option to push to RefWorks. Um, depending on your library management system, I'm sure there'd be an option too, just near the EndNote buttons. Um, other databases such as ProQuest and EBSCO have the save to RefWorks um, button as well. In Google Scholar, um, so there's a little site button um, to get your citation, and that's also got a push to RefWorks button. Um, or you can configure your settings to have it so it actually pops up as well. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, there's also, and I'll show you this a bit later too, but a search databases option in RefWorks, which I don't know, I find it a little bit hit and miss, but it can be quite useful. So we'll have a look at that as well. Okay, so another good thing is this Save to RefWorks browser plugin. Um, and I'll show you guys how to put that into your browser. But basically, it's just a browser plugin. So you put it in there, and when you're on a particular page or site, um, you just hit the button, and it tries to get metadata to create a reference. Um, sometimes it can be really good and give you a perfect reference. Sometimes, too, it just really gives you nothing. You have to manually add it all, um, depending on the site. But it can be a good way to quickly get um, references in as well. OK, so I'm just going to give you a demonstration here. So this is manually adding a reference. So import references, you can do create new reference. That's just where you're typing in. You select your reference type. And you can type in thing. Um, now you can put it all in, but once you've started, hang on a sec, I think I've just paused my video. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm just gonna pause that for a second. You'll see on the right here, this little flash icon. So if you type it in and hit that, it looks for things and um, references that already exist, um, and you can find it straight through there. So let's just play this video again. So you, then you can just put it straight in that way just by putting in the title and save that. And it's gonna pop straight into your reference. Um, you can check in to see what it's got, and sometimes you have to adjust things. The other one is, so I'm just gonna create another new one now this time I'm going to select the book, putting in the title, and just an author surname as well. Hitting that little button to find, and getting in that way. Now you look at this one, I could save it, but I think, okay, I probably don't want the month and date, um, or the pages, plus also I know that this one's the third edition. So I'll just put that into, so always just check the references. Um, and then we save that one. 
Cool. So that's adding a book. Um, the other thing you can do is upload a document. So by just clicking upload a document, you can select one from your computer. Otherwise, you can just drag and drop um, something straight in. And this is an example of one that actually works really well. Wait till it updates. So it's put in the article, it's putting all this information for me. Um, and again, it depends on the PDF. Sometimes it gets it perfectly, sometimes it gets basically nothing. But it's really great when it does work. Okay, and let's just pause for a second here. So this is in um, Bonds Primo, which we call Library Search. So searching in here, as I mentioned before, the little site button. So let's just start this going again. Um, so hit on the citation button and you can just push it straight in to RefWorks from there. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to pause it here for a second too. So when you push stuff into RefWorks, you've got the legacy option or the new RefWorks. Just ignore legacy. That's for people that use an old system. Um, go to new. Also down the bottom, you can just hit don't um, ask me this again. And I'll show you in RefWorks later how you can turn that off um, permanently. So it always goes to new. Okay, let's continue that video. Okay, so we've into put into new RefWorks and it's just pushed it straight in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do in here. Oh, I think that's it for that video. I'll just move to the next slide. Um, so the next thing we hang on a sec. Let's just move to the next slide. Um, so this is about creating instant bibliographies. So it's really easy to create a bibliography in RefWorks. Um, you can just select your references and easily create one. And I'll show you that in a second too. Right in site too. So Microsoft Word, um, if you've got 2016 Word, it's super easy. You just go to the Microsoft Store add-ins um, and search for it that way. Um, it's also easily editable in Word and you can change your referencing style just with a click of the bottom. Um, if you are using like 2010 Word or older, sorry, let's pause that, um, it does tell you in the reference options how to add that too. Um, but now let's just have a look at some of the other features we've got in RefWorks. So this one's a relatively new one. So, I mean, you can put your references in, but it's also online story. So you can put in um, Word, Excel, I tried a PowerPoint that worked today, JPEG, PNG files and that as well. So you can just manually put those in there too. Um, that could be good, say, if you're working on an assignment, you just want to upload your um, Word document in there. So you can, you know, depending on which computer you're on, you can just download it straight from there and keep going. Um, so you can create folders and subfolders like you can for a lot of reference management software. You can add tags to references, you can modify or customize, customize styles with the citation style editor. So say if you're using a version of Harvard and your university style is slightly different than I've got, they've got, you can just go in and modify it yourself. Um, otherwise you can ask RefWorks and they will modify a style for you and your institution to push through so everyone that logs in can have that style. There is also a global edit button and that's for your own personal one. Um, if you want to add or remove particular fields in your references, just universally. So you can go into each thing and say, you know, for a book, add this field. Um, but otherwise, if there's a particular field you just want yourself, you can add that in with the global edit. Um, this is a, another relatively new feature too. So citing Google Docs, and that's another tool like an add-on you can just put in, um, similar to the Word one, but it's for using in Google Docs. Find and remove duplicates. That's just a really quick way to test to see if you've got um, the same references duplicated and removing those. And view options, which I'll give you a look at in a sec. So that's really good for identifying missing elements on some of the view options. Okay, so let's get some more. Um, so getting help. As I said, I am not an expert in RefWorks, but it is quite easy to, um, to figure out there's also like the RefWorks Ex Libris Knowledge Center. Um, I've got the address there, but you can also go straight to there from the help menu in RefWorks. Um, RefWorks LibGuides. 
So they're updating these at the moment. So some of the information is still a little bit old, um, but it's also a really great source of getting information on RefWorks. Um, we have our own RefWorks library research guide at Bond, and I'm sure other universities have RefWorks have them too. They're always a good spot just to get some tips on that as well. Um, the RefWorks YouTube channel, this is also accessible through the help menu. If you have a look at the address there, it's quite a weird looking one. There is a um, Progress RefWorks channel, but if you go to that, it's all the old videos of legacy RefWorks, um, and they're quite unhelpful if you're using the new one. So definitely go to this one here, or just go through RefWorks, um, and it'll go to the right videos. Okay, so it's got another demonstration here. So this is some of the different tools. So the browser plugin, you just go to tools, Oh, sorry, I'm doing duplicate references here, aren't I? Um, this is recorded for well, this audio um, video here, so that's why. Okay, so there is yeah, delete. So if you want to find your duplicate references, just delete nice and easy. Um, create bibliography. So quick site's probably the nicest way to do it um, if you just want to pick your style first and you go down to search for your style, choose your style. Um, you can manually select which ones you want. So if you don't want everything there, you can just go through and select, okay, you know, I want this particular one, that particular one. Um, and create a bibliography that way. And you can just copy and paste that one um, and straight into your Word document. So the other way you can do it too is just go straight to create bibliography. And if it'll just do all references, or if you select some first, we'll just do the manually ones. Again, just pick your style. And you've got to be your bibliography there. One second. So here's the views I was talking about. Um, no, hang on a sec. Let's just pop back. I think I just to that video. Actually, I'll just go into RefWorks and show you that in a second. That's pretty easy. Um, so adding folders under my folders, you can just add a folder, quickly make a name for it. And you can either select all and just push everything straight into your folder, um, or you can just, you know, tick a few things and assign them to your different folders. Um, you can also do subfolders quite easily. So in this one here, we're going to this folder. Just going to add a subfolder underneath. And again, from here, you can just tick on something and assign it to which folder you'd like it in. You can put things in more than one folder at once. Okay, now the citation style editor, that's what I was talking about before, if you want to go and customize your own one or the global edit fields. Okay, so if you want to edit the reference manually, you just go and hit that edit button. Um, that works quite well. You'll find it often doesn't get everything perfect. Um, and this is adding tags. So you can just type in a tag to add and then you can like sort by tags or you know find everything as one tag and put it in that way into different folders. Um, and under the tools, so this one here is the site in Google Docs. So you just click that if you want to add um, the Google Docs adding. Now let's just pause this for a second. Now we're in Microsoft Word. Um, so it's really easy, as I said, to get RefWorks into Microsoft Word if you're in a 2016 version. Um, you just click on the store, which is here, search for RefWorks and add it that way. Let's just continue the video. Otherwise, once you've got it, which I think I actually show you how to do that here. Um, so you open up the store, just put in RefWorks. And add that. Um, then you're good to go. So you can just type in your assignment, search for a reference to put in, and throw it in there and it puts it. Oh. All right, let's just do that again. We've had a slight technicality. Um, 
I'm just going to pop into Word and do it manually now because I think the PowerPoint just broke. Um, so yeah, you're in here, you're typing and stuff, and all you have to do is add in to, now let me just make sure the screen is sharing properly. Okay. Um, so in Word, type it in and insert your reference on the right. Now, as you can see here, you have to log in first. So you're just putting your username and password. So as I'll do it in the video there, you just put in your reference that you want to put in, click on that and quick site to add it in. Um, you can change the citation style, so depending on what you have selected, you can just see what that one is there. Um, it's just loading styles, I might have it. So I've actually got it set as AGLC. Um, AGLC is an option in RefWorks, but it's really good for books, journal articles, anything like cases and legislation, you're still gonna have to manually tweak it quite a lot. Let's just hit APA. Put one of these in here. So it's put in our citation there um, and put into the reference list as well. And I must have clicked on the wrong spot because I put in a bad spot, but let's just put in another one for this bit here. It's a bit annoying how sometimes it tries to center align it. Um, but there we go. So you just build your reference list as you go. Another good thing about using it in Word is rather like EndNote can be a bit tricky to manually edit things. Um, if you wanted to add something like a page number, you can just put that in there. Um, if you notice something was a bit wrong that you didn't want, I mean, it's best to actually edit the reference in RefWorks, but in your bibliography, you can get rid of stuff and add that into quite easily. Um, so anything is wrong or that you want to add to, you can just put it in without actually affecting the references at all. Okay, so let's have a quick look now. Um, I'm going to go into RefWorks and do a few things. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it through Google Scholar. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to get the saved RefWorks plugin and I'll just give you a um, quick overview of everything else in there too. So let's go to Chrome and make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Here we go. Cool. Um, so as I said, you can add the bookmark, let's say to RefWorks. So under tools here, We've got the save to RefWorks. Um, so you just click on install save to RefWorks, and just drag it up into your browser and that's done. So if you're on a um, page, you can just hit that save to RefWorks button and it will try to mine the metadata and create a reference. Um, let's pop quickly into library search. That's a bond search engine. Um, do a quick search. So, oops, oh, sign me in again. Um, so even though there is the save to RefWorks options in here, you can also just do the um, bookmark or two, like say if you wanted to put a whole bunch of stuff in at once. If we go save to RefWorks here, now this could take a while depending on the results, um, but you'll see here on the right hand side, it's popped up a record for each of the results here and you could select them all or just say, yep, I wanted that one, that one, and push them into RefWorks. And that one's just uploading. Um, wait for that to open, but I'll just show you too. If you have like a, um, your own bookmark, um, your own bookshelf, Taking a little while. Um, you can push things straight in through there as well. If you've got multiple, you want to do it once. Okay. 
doesn't usually work, but I'm just going to pop out of that for a sec. Because it's taking a bit long. Um, so in our one, and if you've got Primo, it might look the same. So you can go to your favorites or your pin menu. Um, and if you wanted to push in a th bunch of records at once, you can just go into your three dots and say RefWorks. And I didn't select that, don't ask me before. So let's just go export to the new RefWorks. Um, this way is a lot faster than doing the bookmarklet. The bookmarklet's okay for one at a time, but as you saw before, when you select a multiple, it can take a little bit of time. Okay, so now that we're back into RefWorks, um, I'll just show you the different features. So I mentioned the search databases option. Um, if you just manually enter a reference like I did before and then hit that little lightning button, um, it will just search databases. But otherwise you can say, so I've got Bond University here. Um, there's a whole bunch of different databases that can search PubMed. You see there's other universities that you can search. Just search in there and the database will come up. But I find this can be, if you're going to do your own um, university's platform, best just to go to that and push it into reference. I find it does work a lot easier. Um, but this is an option as well. So sharing, you can share a folder um, with people in your institution. Um, so you can either type in people's names or just say, make it a publicly available for everyone um, at your institution. Tags as well. So you can just search for tags, add tags. It's a little bit, um, you know, it's useful, but it's probably not a major thing. Um, on Let's just go back to the home page by clicking on the name at the top. So we've done the manually add. Um, that's just another share option here. Um, under, under the your name, so if we go into settings here, just quickly show you, pop down to the bottom. So send my expert um, exports to new RefWorks. Or legacy if you use legacy for asking each time. So because I clicked on that, don't show me um, before it's automatically put me onto that. But otherwise, if you're here, just click on that. So that way, it doesn't matter which browser you're on, it'll know what your settings are. Um, you can also connect it with Dropbox here as well. So let's just update that. Um, on the right hand side here, help. So that's where you can go to the Knowledge Center or the video tutorials. I'll quickly just jump into the video tutorials to show you guys. I actually want to do the video. But there's like an introduction to Ref, RefWorks. Um, if we just go down the bottom, learn to use RefWorks in 20 minutes, play all. So if you just watch those, it'll give you an overview of everything you need to know um, with RefWorks. Okay. Let's pop out of that one. Sorry, my tabs are just hiding underneath the settings up there. Here we go. Um, so what else can you do in here? Um, I'll show you, if I just go to my documents. So this one here is a Word document um, that I've just uploaded. This one here is a PowerPoint I've just uploaded. So rather than just references, um, you can add your files to, as I've said, and let's just Click this one here, assign to folder, and I've got this folder here, my materials. So rather than all documents, if I just want to see what I've got in there, this is where you can save things that aren't actually for assignments. Okay, uh, what else is quite useful? Let's go back to our home page. And um I'll just show you uploading a document when it might not work as well. So that one I did in the video, it got all the metadata, it was really nice. If we try to get a different one, let's go down to Reflex. Let's try this one here. So this is actual a law case. And it might take a few seconds to upload. Um, but this is an example of one where 
it really doesn't get in the metadata. So you basically have to go and change everything manually. Um, so yeah, if you've got a PDF, throw it in. Some would work perfectly. It'll do everything for you. Others, um, well, let's have a look at this one. So it said it's a newspaper article. Um, it's put all this information that I don't know where I got it from because it's not actually a newspaper article at all. Um, it's a law case. Yeah, so you notice with PDFs, sometimes works perfectly, sometimes absolutely um, does nothing for you. You just have to manually do it yourself and that's where you can just go into your edit button and change the type of resource and put the extra information in that you need. Okay. Um, let's just have a look. I think we've got a chat. No, that's all good. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, so we've had a look at um, putting things into Word. Um, actually, I'll probably show you guys how to do this, site, um, the bibliography in Word and how to change styles as well, because that can be um, pretty useful. But I won't do that yet, because I think if I go to a Word document, I'll stop sharing this screen. Um, but while we're in RefWorks, let's go to Google Scholar. And so I've just done a search here. Um, you'll notice I've got a import to RefWorks button straight away. Um, that's because I've added it. Otherwise, you go into the site and just down the, let's move this out of the way. Um, RefWorks, so you can just click on that and push it straight into RefWorks that way. Otherwise, if you want to get this little import to RefWorks option, um, just in your little three lines at the top, go into your settings. Um, it's possibly the cog, depending on what browser you're looking, otherwise it might just be called settings. And just scroll down to bibliography manager and you can select what manager you want. So I've got mine set to RefWorks. So anything I wanted to add in there, I can just click straight in. And it's not gonna ask me if I wanted to use the leg legacy one now because I've changed those settings. Um, that's another really good way, say if you've got um, references that you haven't found in library search, um, but you, you know, say you've got them from a reference list, if you put them into Google Scholar and push them through it, it usually does create quite a nice reference there for you. Um, one other thing, let's, so let's just go into our create bibliography. So I'm going to do APA to start with. Um, let's just grab a couple of citations here. And okay. Sorry, let's make this a bit bigger. Um, and then continue to bibliography. So I've got my APA site on bibliography here. You can just go into citation style and change that. So let's say if we want AGLC, and this one with mine, that's one I've just slightly modified. Oh, okay, it doesn't like that. And that one, um, if you're in Word though, it does that. Let's just pick Harvard. Actually, let's quickly pop back. Just going to do it the instant way, makes it a little bit easier. So here we go, we've got our Harvard one here, and now let's pop back to our APA one. So you can just quickly change your styles. Um, so I'm going to pop back into Word now um, to show you guys in there. Now let's just bear with to make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Cool. So in here too, um, if you've got your reference list, you can go into your options and change citation style. And let's just scroll back up, wait for the scars to load. And let's say we want, now I'm going to do AGLC in here. Now, here's your bibliography. Um, 
update. You'll notice too, it's put the footnote in, but there's nothing down the bottom. Um, so when you're adding your references, so let's create a new one. Um, you say whether you want it as a citation or a footnote. So let's just get rid of that. So if we were to insert um, our footnote, so you're typing along, put one in here. Insert footnote, and now I'm going to go into my add-ins, refworks. And let's just pop that in. So see here too, where it's got insert citation. Sorry, I got the wrong one there. Uh, let's try that again. Oh, it's, I think it's the preview and edit one actually. Sorry, what's this? There we go. So go to the preview and edit menu. Um, as I said, I'm not an expert, as you can probably see. So in text citation, we'll do it in text. Otherwise, just do select footnote if you are doing a footnote style. And then when you insert that in, it'll pop it in to the bottom like it should. Okay, so that's basically everything I wanted to go through. Um, I'm just going to have a look at now and see if we've got any chat questions. So if anyone does have a question, send them through. Or if there's anything you'd like to go through in more detail, um, it is quite an easy piece of software to use, um, as I've mentioned. Um, the help um, tutorials are quite good too, just to give you an overview. Um, yeah, any of the automatic stuff, like just double check, I find for our library search system, for example, um, it always puts in ProQuest as an author when you've got an ebook through the ProQuest database. So sometimes you have to just go and ma manually change those. Um, but same as any automatic citations, I guess, you just got to make sure it actually gets it right. So did anyone have any questions to put into the chat? Um, I think this is working right, but I can't see any at the moment. Um, just interested too, is anyone in watching here not have RefWorks as an option for their university? Or do you guys all actually have RefWorks? Okay, so it doesn't look like we've got, let me just, catch it in a different view. Okay, so no questions. So um, thank you guys for listening. Um, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. As I said, I'm just learning RefWorks myself, so I'm not a massive expert, but it's pretty easy just to figure things out. Um, have a look at Bond's library guides too. We'll put the, um, I'll put the slide chart minus the videos because that's just huge um, in terms of the file size. Um, and also just have a look if you're in RefWorks. Yeah, just the question mark at the top menu. That's where you get the YouTube channel, which is super helpful. Um, and also just the um, knowledge center too. So thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you guys next time.